yeah, all kinds of all kinds of cool stuff like that. And so I was obsessed with creating like the perfect storyline, and that's all I thought about. And and so when I was in class, I wasn't just doodling. I was yeah. writing care. I was drawing characters. I was designing them. I was trying to figure out. Okay, so if he's an armor based character, is it an organic armor? Is it what's the story behind? Oh, it's from this planet. Oh, wow. okay, well, what's the political structure of that planet? And so, like, I had notebooks Jesus. of. I, in fact, I'm moving. I'm going through them. I have like notebooks and just stacks and stacks of, of background stuff. Um, the one class I paid attention to a lot was biology, because that was teaching me like how to come up with superpower stuff like on an actual biological level. So instead of it just being like, he has telekinesis, I could be like, <laughs> oh, because I'm learning about mutation of cells and I can adapt it. Like that class is a class that, like I paid, I was on point. Like I paid attention in biology like every single day. That was the highlight of my day. Cause I, then I'd go and I That's could crazy. like upgrade my storyline stuff. But yeah, man, I was obsessed as a kid. That's pretty much all I focused on, all I did. Yeah, man, I mean, that, that's like, that's, a lot of people will straight like stray away from that as they get older. They'll start to they'll start as a little, as a little kid. I think you've got to figure out figured out completely what you want to be. Like whatever it is that when you see a little kid's eyes just like this, and they're just yeah. in the moment, that's what they want to do. And I think that when I I have never really got rid of that um, since I was little. I mean, I used to do like flip books with sticky notes and that's how I knew I liked to animate, you know, but I like, I just like creating and we kind of, you and I got in this discussion the other day because we were trying to think about the entrepreneur, like the round table. And we're always trying to think of like, how do we make this into something that we can, you know, just live off of or, or just be something that we can, then it can help us, you know, survive yeah. and just be, a, you know, not a business, but something that could generate something. And, um, we're all artists. Um, <laughs> You know, I, we were talking about it and we we're sitting there talking about such business structure and we both just came to the conclusion and you said it and you were like, I just like creating content and you're like, I just want to create cool content. And I was just like, I'm right there with you. Like, I just like creating shit. And that's the hard thing is like when you create things nowadays, it's well, what, it, what has it helped me? Like, what does it do? Sometimes I'm like, I don't fucking care. It just was something awesome I wanted to do. And if you find it interesting, then then watch it. And, yeah. you know, that's why I like the companies out there that have been doing things for years and they just kind of stumbled upon a way to be able to do it. Like Simon's Cat or Simon the Cat, that YouTube channel. I don't know if you've ever seen this. Mm -hmm. This guy just like draws these black and white cartoons and like him and his cat. And it's hilarious. And he just... <laughs> And he's got like an office and studio and does this. And then there's Explosum or Cyanide and Happiness and um, super fucked up comic. And <laughs> it's so simple. And what it was was four friends who started in like 2004. And if you go to their website, you can actually go back. It'll go back to the beginning because they just posted a, a comic a day for the last like 10, nine or 10 years. Yeah. More. And you can go back to day one and just That's follow cool. them. And the four of them. So like, they like we're like we just wanted to make each other laugh, <laughs> yeah. and now they've got books. They go to Comic Con. They've got um, they did a Kickstarter where they raised like five hundred grand or a million bucks in like a day um, okay. to do this animated series. And now they do the animated series, which is way more fucked up. Because um, <laughs> you can actually see the stuff like animated. Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. So I mean, that's always what I wanted to do. Like Drive 80, I, I want to make our own content. Like I want to make cool things that people yeah. buy. Like I, I, I have to, or the model that I built was making animations for people. But when you're doing things for everyone else, it kind of, you're under the gun or you're under their vision. And as a creative, you're just like, you don't want to do that. Like you don't want to, you know, it's like, you don't want to try to pick out of someone's brain what they're thinking. Because if they're yeah. not a creative person, they're just they're like, well, I just, I don't feel it yet. You're like, how am I supposed to know what you're going to feel? You know, <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, I'm lucky because my clients are good. Like they're, they, are, I create a process to get that out of them before we create anything, okay. you know, and we can tweak it along the way. So that my, my company was built off of frustration. It was just off of frustration of working with other companies in the wrong way. But okay, but we just like creating, you know, I like, I like people, I like surrounding myself with people who like to create. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, same here, man. Like, you know, I started my business, and again, I had I spent all my childhood and everything wanting to take what I loved and what I felt like the message I had inside of me and the art I had inside of me, and just like monetize that. But I didn't have the business skills. I mean, 
I had a little bit of the whole like you know hustling you know hustler thing like I'd want like a new you know Batman toy or something and like I would con my grandma into like paying me like my grandpa gets so mad he's like why are you, are you paying him twenty dollars to mow the lawn I can have the neighbor kid do it for like five dollars and she's like oh leave him alone you know uh, and so like, and then I Fiverr was created <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I was always you know I did a few um, lemonade stands but there wasn't enough action for me it was too boring just sitting there waiting for people I I preferred to like go and guilt people into like hiring me uh, <laughs> with whatever my story was it was always a so yeah, the whole content creation really, because even like my sales tactics were like, here's this awesome thing I'm wanting to do that I'm passionate about, and this is why you should support me. Yeah. Um, and and you know, even though you know, like we do stuff like I remember uh, raking the neighbor's yard, and then be like, hey, we we raked your uh, yard because you know we're really wanting to get money to go to whatever. What do you think? And they're so, like, oh, let me get some money. <laughs> you see, like that's funny because that's a sales tactic, and I know we're kind of like you know. It, I don't want to break it too far off, but that's almost a sales tactic that people are taught is to like the other day I was talking to Gary in the group and he was like, you know, give, provide value first. Yeah. And then once you, you know, that's, and it makes so much sense. It's like going to someone's website, download this free thing. You're providing value first, then they're mm-hmm. interested, then they're intrigued, then you've helped them, then they want to help you or then they're more intrigued to buy from you, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, I think, um, but there's been a bit of a switch from the creative side of it because now, Part of the creativeness has been creating a business. Mm-hmm. So well, that's, that's kind of fun. a little bit of what I wanted to. Okay, so this this is going to go totally different than if it had when we first talked about this. Because since then, I've really been thinking about it, um, and I feel like I'm going to probably be a little bit talking out both sides of my mouth for this one. Because yeah. if we'd done this like right when we first talked about, it, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm an artist. Like I've learned, I, I, I'm what Gary V says, I'm an artist with entrepreneur tendencies. But I really am thinking about it, and I've, I've talked to Donnie a couple times since our last, because I hadn't talked to him for a long time, but then after that, you know, our last episode, um, I was talking to him about stuff. And in fact, I was just talking the other day, and he was like, you know what, like, you, if you're going to be, if you're going to make a business, and you're going to be the boss, he's like, it doesn't matter what you do, because you're going to hire someone else to do it. He's like, it, this, the whole, you know, find something you love, and you'll never work a day in your life. He's like, I don't agree with that at all, because... It doesn't matter what you do because even if it's like, you know, video that you love, you're not the one doing the videos. If you're the boss, you're building the, the business and you're hiring that out. And so I've really been like thinking about that. And then again, just listening to a ton of like uh, Gary Vee content, um, you know, while packing the house and, and whatnot and just trying to process all this. And I've come, I've come to the conclusion, I'm trying to figure out myself, right? So I would have said, oh, I'm an artist with entrepreneur tendencies, but you know, something happened here. I've been doing these yard sales, right? And like, I've like come alive, man. Like I haven't felt like this amazing and so long. like my wife hates them because people want to haggle and people are, I mean, people are honestly just in general, people as, as a group are pretty stupid. Um, and so like, you'll put something out there and you'll be like $500 and they're like, will you take five? Yeah. And you're like, what? Yeah. So she like can't handle it. So like, and she does this whole like um, uh, Merced online yard sale thing, you know, the local, you know, online groups. And I kind of stayed away from it just because of the things she said. And I was like, I don't think I could handle that because it just sounds like they're literally like the dumbest people in the world or who hang out on these things. Um, I, I'm sorry if you're a Merced online yard sale. Um, but I've probably already offended you with something I posted. I'm sorry online. if you bought my couch last week. <laughs> <laughs> you're watching this. Um, so anyways, I, so when I had – I always like go, if I was doing that, I would do it this way and this way. I was doing the right. whole typical like – marketer like this is what you should do even though i've never done that and i have no intention to do that i'm going to tell you how you should do it so finally when it came down to it i was like you know what? i'm going to put my money where my mouth is and so i've kind of taken it over and so we've done three physical yard sales where like we put all the crap out on the lawn um and then we've i've also been doing it online and i'm telling you man <laughs> i have loved it like i saw my wife I was like i almost want to just this could, I would want to do this on the weekends, just like turn my garage into like a little mini store and I open up the door, bring everything out, post online. And I've been doing all these tactics, right? Like I posted some in the group. Like I didn't just go, I didn't just put signs up. Actually, I forgot to take my sign down. So I'm still around town. Uh, <laughs> but like just when people would, I, when I, I could tell if they just saw the signs and strolled in, that sucked. I didn't like like traditional yard sale at all. I like when I pulled people in for, and I could, you know, and they're like, oh yeah, I messaged you on the thing. I was looking at this. And then how much more I could sell and all that kind of stuff. And I specifically love like the interacting with the people, but also like presenting my stuff differently because in the group, everyone's like couch, um, new, you know, has a spot, 
uh, pickup only, you know, and it's like, it's like computers are talking to each other. And I was like, when I would look at her stuff, I'm like, this is not her. Like, I, her, well, she would write the same way because she didn't know any better. I was like, this stuff sucks. Like, no one knows how to communicate. Like, you guys are all talking like automatons to each other. Like, computers inputting couch, one spot. What's the lowest price? $5. Will you take three? No. Okay, I will be there. I'm like, what the heck? These are terminals interfacing. And so I get in there and I start just messing around, right? And I was like, this is, I'm either going to like be the yard sale king or I'm going to get banned from all four <laughs> groups I'm in. So I'm going to do one or the other. So I get on there and I'm using like copywriting to tell stories. I'm making crap up, not like lying, but like just like being goofy and telling stories. Like I did this one with this chair where I'm talking about like, it's a chair. It's not a chair for skinny people. It's so comfortable. If, if you've got a large, you know, all this kind of stuff. And it was I, funny because I actually sold it to a very fit, like health person, like in actual, like um, health, probably a hundred dollars worth of expensive, nice, like workout clothes. And she actually, um, <laughs> she showed up full on Lou lemon attire. Yeah, exactly. She made fun of me a little bit for that. I was like, yeah, you bought it, didn't you? <laughs> um, and I've been doing all, I've been doing videos. It's like, no one's doing videos. Everyone posts like, pictures um, of their yard sale when they put stuff out and there'll be like three pictures and then a box and it says like plus 18 pictures and i was like hmm. people so then people are scrolling through the pictures looking at stuff i go let's let's do this virtually man so i, I turn it on i'm like hey guys we're having a yard sale or and it's like hey we're back we're doing another yard sale and i'm like let's get started i go through i go oh, we have a table and it's it's actually wood and it's got a bench and blah 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 i'm like going through and describing stuff and i'm like oh there's a really creepy wicker chair if you want to freak people out on Halloween you know, when they come up to your house and you know I was like going through stuff right and I was like boom boom and I knew I kind of learned the language because you know after the first few days of people going asking questions I learned what to anticipate so I would just start to ask like answer stuff like oh no this chair works perfectly it goes up and down and back and it doesn't have any it's not broken no rips and, and I was doing these videos and I was like my goal because I'm, I'm out and like at the, when I started, I'm like, I'm out in like three weeks, right? But my goal is to try to make such an impact in this group. One, I want to ma make a lot of money and get right. rid of all my junk. But two, my secondary, like, egotistical, selfish goal is I want to forever change these groups I'm in. And it's like, I want people to start using video. I want people to start, you know, like, writing better stuff and telling right. stories. And I'm already starting to notice that. Like, people are now, instead of just posting a crappy picture, I'm noticing people are using those, like, collage apps. Okay. Because I've done this too. Like I didn't mention it, but I, I, I've done this a little bit when I don't want when I have a few pictures I want to do. I've done some collage stuff. Um, so I'm noticing a lot more of that where people are taking multiple photos using the collage app to put like four, two to four pictures on there, and then writing on the actual picture like a selling point of it. Um, so I'm like, yes, I'm already making, I'm already impacting these groups, and it's just interesting to see what I'm doing, and I'm taking the idea of my stuff, I'm doing two things and I'll, I'll let you say what you're gonna say. I'm really, there's two things I'm focusing on. Um, I'm, I'm doing the whole content where I'm providing value, where I'm not just going, here's my crap, buy it. Yeah. I'm like making it entertaining, but then also answering the questions in a way that's easy to digest and, and it drags, draw, draws attention. Um, but then the other thing I'm doing is I completely forgot what I was gonna say, but the whole point of what I was doing is it's getting so much more attention so I'm looking at like people who post a yard sale and there'll be like three, four, maybe five questions. And that like includes like a question asked and then they answer. Mm -hmm. um, that's right, the other thing I'm doing is I was listening to Gary Vee. So I'm like, I'm gonna run my yard sale like he ran Wine Library TV. So like my wife's like, I'm not answering that person. That's a stupid question. I've already answered that. It's up on the top of the post. And my wife isn't a crazy mean person. I'm just, I'm exaggerating for effect. And Your wife sounds awful. I'm actually not exaggerating. <laughs> she hates this. <laughs> I try. I don't. I can't lie. I was trying to say she, she hates, hates people. No, she doesn't hate people. She hates doing the whole like online, and she hates selling. She's not. She'd rather just give stuff away. Um, yeah. And I was like, no. <laughs> and so I love it. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna pretend like this is my wine liner TV. TV. So I'm like answering questions. I'm going out. Like one night, I was in bed. Like we'd done a yard sale all day long. I was in bed, and someone goes, "Can you take a picture of the inside of the washer?" And I was like, Vroom. I out of bed. Throw, you know, get dressed again, go outside, pull it out, to, took the pictures. Like five minutes later, I responded with three pictures of, you know, of showing it. I was like, I am rocking this yard sale thing. Yeah. And I'm getting way more attention. So where everyone else is getting like four or five, maybe six, you know, comments deep. And then they're having to like either like, they're trying to bump it. So they're either writing, just writing bump 
or putting like a dot to try to keep it going. For me, like you look at mine and it's like 36, 46, you know, like questions deep. It just keeps going and going because people are, are asking questions. I'm interacting. It's pushing it back up to the top of the thread. Well, it's been amazing. I mean, here's the thing, dude. I think there is, there's, it's gotta be a definition of what creative is. So you are creating something, you know, you're creating mm -hmm. something different that, so you're going to a place and our, I think as a creative, it's like in Portland. So where I'm at currently, when you drive around town, everything is really like intricate and it stands out. It's like, yeah, the town is a basic town. It's a basic grid and the houses are simple and it's just very chill. And it's like artists came here and said, we should paint a giant mural on that wall because it should just go there. And we should make this store here that's in the middle of a neighborhood stand out in this way. And it's like, that's why this, it's so cool here. So I think mm -hmm. creatives see like, man, if this would just see, be so much cooler if. Yeah. So I think like for you, you're walking into this place cause you're knowing, you know, the more the business side of it too. And you're like, this would be awesome if I just had some fun with this. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what creatives are. And then the, the fun is what attracts people in that sense. You know, yeah. so, like that's well, it also provides value. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's, yeah, exactly. I may be thinking it's fun, but there's also value because I'm providing more information than the other people are in a, in a way that's easier to, to digest. And you're creating experience too. Exactly. And then the experience, cause then it, and then it's funny. Like if you're going to buy a chair, you're like, Oh yeah, I bought it at a yard sale versus like, Oh yeah, that's a fat person's chair. What, what are you talking about? Oh yeah, it's, it's it's made for fat people. I, I'm not even supposed to have it. You know, it's only supposed to be like, what are you talking about? like yeah, the guy posted is like they can like share the whole thing. It makes a story that they can tell forever. You know, yeah, and there's but, a story goes with it exactly. Yeah. So you're creating a so you're creating a story. Yeah, you're creating interest. So there is creativity in that. Yeah. So I think I, I think it goes along with building a business because the people who start businesses they're just like I could do that better or I you know I really like doing this and I think I could do that better and, and yeah. They do that, but then there's the the business side of it that they don't want to stick with, or they they they're not a big fan of, you know. Yeah, and you know that that brings me to my point. So everything we just said is to to make this point uh, that I've come to the realization because again, I'm gonna I say it a, a third time. If we had this, you know, the week or two ago or whatever, I've been like, I'm an artist with entrepreneur tendencies, and I've been battling like this whole idea of okay, I feel like I'm really good with the entrepreneur stuff. And I feel like, you know, copyright and storytelling, business structures. But then at the same time, I also want to be, you know, I, I looked at like my day to day. I want to be like content, you know, like I don't want to sell copywriting anymore. Like I want to, you know, create my content, my videos. Yeah. But then I love just selling. The, like I'm not passionate about any of the pieces of furniture I sold. But more than I've been passionate in a long time, I was like passionately providing the, and that was my goal is to provide the best service on Merced online yard sale. And like my the stack of cash I have, <clears throat> like, like backs up the fact that I was successful. Really? Did you do stuff. like, well, Oh yeah, man. Like we, we've done it incredibly well. Um, I see we were just, and okay, I'll tell you right now, most of our furniture that I'm selling is like hand me down stuff. So it's stuff that's all like, most of it's not like we paid a ton of money for it. So it's not like we're doing pennies on a dollar. I've got a $1,100 couch. We're going to sell it for like a hundred dollars. It's not like that kind of stuff. It's like, we got this at a garage sale or for free like 10 years ago and we've had it and it's been great, but now we're going to sell it because it's kind of old and we're moving. Yeah. Um, I made in the three days that I did the yard sale and I'm still going, but I made, I've made over 700 bucks. Damn. And just a few, a few hours each day. And in fact, the last day I was like, on my lap, I was also cleaning my garage and then on my laptop doing entrepreneur roundtable stuff. So I wasn't even like 100% focused. I was back and forth between like on my laptop and then answering people online, getting people here, selling stuff. Uh, and so I'm hoping to this week before we leave to make another, I got a few more things. I'm hoping to make at least another 100, if not 200, um, which is going to completely pay for my, you know, traveling. See, out like there. the entrepreneur in me is now thinking, you know, so then there's the creative in me who's all about creating then as the entrepreneur means like, oh man, you could make that and package it and sell it to people on eBay because they exactly. eBay stores have better experience. That, like a yeah. guide, like how to sell your craft on online yard sales. And yeah. I was like, that's a good title. And But then the problem is- and Then you're gonna, I, make, the, you're gonna make it. <laughs> well, the thing is I say this 100% respectfully. Um, 
Like I understand like there's different kinds of people. It's like my wife is the demographic of people on, on online merch at yard sale. My wife wouldn't buy that in a hundred years. If it was free, she wouldn't read it. She wouldn't be like, I don't care about, so I just want to post this on here for a few bucks. I'm going to sell it and I'll be done with it. And I'm going to, she would never. So that's why I'm like, uh, I don't think that's probably worth it because it's the demographic. Like there's it people. So like me, I'm already after three days, I'm like, I'm already looking at like Shopify again. Like, what are their current prices? What else could I sell? Oh, can I do this out of my garage? I can get other stuff. So, anyone who would have those tendencies that would be interested is already to the next thing, and they're doing this on a, on a larger level because they're trying to scale it anyways. I don't think there's a lot of people kind who are of. interested who would stay at that level. Well, Sean, know. Sean, who joined the group, uh, Sean Smith, who I had put in the group uh, last week. He was my old drummer in um, from years ago, and we like literally just like reconnected last week, and. Uh, he uh, actually started while we were in the band. He used to sell things on eBay. Oh, okay. And it kind of started taking off. So then he was like, "Let me just sell band T-shirts." Because yeah. he was selling band merch, and he started and he just narrowed it down to band T-shirts. So he's been doing that for the last ten years, I guess, a little over ten years. Uh -huh. And he ended up making a living off of it. So then he transferred over to Amazon now. Because eBay is very restrictive, and they're like, yeah, eBay's. Stuff. I've heard a lot from a lot of people that eBay is not what it used to be. It's not a good platform yeah. anymore for making. Yeah, like a lot money. of people are leaving there, but yeah. there are a lot of people that are selling on Amazon now, I guess. And mm -hmm. Sean like makes a full time. He has two guys that he that work for him, and That's then cool. it's crazy. So people do make a living. So there is the split of the yeah, I'm doing a yard sale this weekend and that's the first one I'm going to do or the only one I'm going to do in the next 10 years or five yeah. years. So they're not, no, they're not going to buy a guide off that, but it's like the people who do sell online or sell something. It's like, here's a better experience. Here's the better way to do this. But again, yeah. it's just, again, it's just like, we are so built right now because of building businesses that that stuff gets us like amped up. Yeah. Like, oh man, you could do this. You could, you can, you can, you can, you can do all these different techniques to sell this or blah, blah, blah. There's all these strategies because we're so bombarded with this shit all day long that well, we want to work. The thing that is, the combination of doing this and then also again, just like literally putting, well, I shouldn't say literally, it's figuratively, putting an IV into my arm and just pumping Gary V in right. um, for the last week and a half. And he talks all about like how he actually sometimes, he, he prefers failure because he for him, that means it fuels him. He keeps going, he talks about how it's, it's the game more than the process. And, you know, yeah, money's a byproduct, but for yeah. him, that's not the point. So then I was thinking about that and what Donnie said. And then, like, how two weeks ago I was like, you know what? Like, yeah, I have business tendencies, but I want to be the artist. I just want to create content, which is still true. Like, I still, like, on a day to day basis, I would love to spend most of my time shooting, editing, writing, doing the creative videos that we're actually going to talk about at the end of this, where I'm going to be pumping a few of them out, um, even, even today and tomorrow and whatnot. Um, but then I had the concept of, all these things kind of connecting my experience, my conversation with Donnie and the stuff I'm hearing from Gary V of, you know what, what if, what if there are, so the, it, okay, let me, let me say to the, our, our topic of artist versus entrepreneur, what if someone's art is business, like Gary V clearly yeah. says his is, it's like, so that becomes interesting now because now I've been thinking since I've been selling this stuff and I just, there's just something about the adrenaline rush and a, I literally it's an adrenaline rush it's like i can feel like i know i'm getting that whole dopamine shot to my brain every time someone's like i'm interested i'm like yeah talk and then we're willing and dealing and then i either like give them a discount and they think they got a discount and it's way more than i was originally wanting or vice versa i go no this is why it's this price and then they say okay i'll be there pick it up anyways um yeah and so that's been awesome so i'm like well what if that is the case and what if my problem is I, I can be an artist or, you know, the whole entrepreneur. And I'm starting to think that my particular, I'm not saying this is forever, but my particular issue is I think I've tried to connect them and I'm trying to sell my art, which you kind of have to learn to do. But then there's a problem because when you're an artist, you're, you're in a much more personal space, right? And you have to have a really thick skin to go, here's yeah. my art. And then I want to sell it and get feedback versus if you're an entrepreneur and your art is selling, you don't care if someone insults the product. You're like, yeah. Then don't don't take it. Sorry, move on. I got another guy to go to. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. But if that's your art, that kills you, right? Unless you've developed that skin, you're like, oh man, they don't like this, or they're they're judging me now. Uh, and so that's been my thought. Is like, okay, so now I'm rethinking this because I love the idea of creating art and having some system to monetize it, where I'm not like having to like sell myself, but like letting the art get out there and create uh, a, an art like quarter digital. I've ta I've talked to you about. They're a great group of guys. 
uh, two guys who do, and, and Freddie Wong who does Rocket Jump, some of these awesome YouTube channels. But now I'm also like, okay, but on this other side, like, I really like selling stuff that I didn't make because there's no identity in it. Like, well, there's just a win. It's a, it's yeah. a, it's a, um, it's like a real, it's like a quick fix. You know, it's a yeah. real quick success, and that's what being an entrepreneur. I mean, it's it's just people telling you no for a really long time, or even after you gain gain success, they still tell you no. But you have developed that skin, or you know that that's fine because I know someone else is going to buy it because I've been doing this mm -hmm. for a while. You know. Yeah, and so I, I was really thinking about today, I was driving around and I was really thinking about that, like the whole, because I've also kind of, it's kind of, I guess, a nerdier side, like for a while, for a few years, um, if not longer, I've been really interested in just like the logistics of physically sending out a product. Mm -hmm. uh, even though I'm not a manufacturer and I have no interest in that, but just the idea of like, okay, I made a sale, now I have to like send it. And the logistics that go behind that, and I even did for about a year, I, um, a company called Package Fox, I was doing a lot of content for, and you know, so I was all into the shipping industry, and I, I was loving it. Like you know, it sounds really boring, but it was really fascinating to me about the whole whole thing. So now I'm like, okay, this idea of selling, and then the idea of like the, the shipping, and I was like, maybe I need to start selling stuff. And so then I was like, well, what else? Like you know, Gary had uh, wine, and he got all into that. Like I was thinking, like if I went this route, what would I? I'm just like playing hypothetical in my head. What would I do? And it's like, well, um, yeah, I mean, normally behind me there's a bookshelf. It's a different room. With yeah. all my you know comic stuff, and then it's like I went back to an idea I had a long time ago. I was like, what if I went around because like when you have a comic store, like I've always wanted a comic store, but the biggest problem is like um, over inventory that just pe is just sitting there and it's been on the shelf for three years that no one wants. Right. So it's like, and then I'm also really interested. This goes back to my whole shipping business thing, like the idea of these box businesses, right? Birch Box and all these different boxes where you know Dollar Shave Club, Dollar Beard Club, where mm -hmm. people are shipping boxes of stuff. I was like, what if I like went around and like connected with all the different like comic stores in, in my area and set up a deal with them to sell the stuff they can't sell in like discount boxes, you know, and to where someone pays X amount of dollars and it's like you, it's yeah. a monthly subscription and you're gonna you're never gonna know. You're just gonna get like cool comic crap. It's gonna be comics, it's gonna be stickers, it's gonna be toys, it's gonna be That's brilliant. graphic novels. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, I'm moving to Richmond, right? So there's got to be at least three or four of them, and which I could totally start out that way. And they would love it because they're basically going to be making money, even though you're going to be discounting it and you're going to be taking part of the profit. They're going to be like, I'm sure they would even take a 40% margin on something that's causing them to not be able to, one, not make money, and two, not to bring in new stock. You know, it's like, oh, I would have made $10 if I sold that, but it's not selling. So I'll go ahead and take the $3 if you sell it that I was never going to get and I can bring in a new item that's going to sell right away. I was like, dude, that yeah. would be so much. As the, so now I'm kind of wondering, like, as, as just like a fun hobby, if I should try that. Like, I can be like the content creator is my main thing with Entrepreneur's Roundtable. I was like, I wonder, just to scratch an itch, if I should look into that and see because it just sounds fascinating to me and like fun. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I, by the way, there's like six in Richmond. I just Googled it. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> You can hear this cat. My my roommate's cat is like just like going nuts. Relax, dude. Relax. Um, oh, you're gonna be talking. It's gonna like jump on your face or something. It's like, like <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be what, an internet meme. <laughs> why is it? Why is it so like? Why is it with our own businesses? We don't treat it the same way as we see another business. We're like, oh man, I could like totally school that one. But with our own, we don't do that. Well, I think it's, I mean, for one thing, it's the whole same thing as like, it's- There's no attachment? Well, it's, like, it's that whole self-awareness. Like I could pick out your flaws easier than I could pick out mine. Right. Versus you could pick out mine. You know, now I do feel like I'm pretty self-aware, but in general, that I mean, as a general rule, like it's always easier to like see what's wrong with someone else's life than what's, what's in fact, I was just making a mental judgment of a buddy of mine earlier today about how he spends his money. And I was like, I don't know, I was like, I'm not exactly known as being like Mr. Financially conservative. Like, you know, so why am I judging him when, you know, like I have my own issues and I just think that it's a lot easier to look at someone else and go, Oh, if I had your business, that would be easy. I would do this versus looking at dealing with your own problems. Right. Yeah, man. Um, sorry. I'm just, someone just reached out to me. I had to text him back. Was the uh, mayor was Nick down. said this guy needs to be on the show. Um, he sent, a uh, Instagram link. So uh, I'm scared to click on that because every time we do, so we like get 
on him. Like, okay, good. I was like, every time we do that, like one of us gets kicked out. <laughs> yeah, this guy is actually pretty sick. Yeah, man, like, so to go back to the whole thing, like if I, like I see these creatives online and I see like photographers, I, I, and Instagram's a great place and you know, Nick brings up a good point. Like. Instagram's a great place to put photography and drawings and and for me, I mean, I should putting animations up there all the time, um, which I just kind of figured out the other day of like kind of, had, I mean, it's easy. I didn't really, I, I, I thought of a cool approach of going after businesses by making Instagram videos for their product oh, and nice. just sending them to them and be like, you guys can use this, you know? Yeah. Um, but like, I always, I would rather be making something that people buy instead of making something for people to buy. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I'd rather just make, make, be making content. So to go back on which one am I, um, I'm a content creator because like I'd rather just do that. Like uh, when we made the video, um, you know, for today. Yeah. Um, Spoilers. <laughs> so spoiler. So I spent last week, like I unplugged from Drive 80 and I just did like a day of storyboarding and then like two and a half days of animating. And it was just strictly for this. And there's no guarantee there's any money going to be made. I mean, there's, you know, there's, it was just, I, I went to a coffee shop. I like plugged into my computer. I was drinking coffee and I just was on my computer for five to six hours, just straight doing this. And I went out and videotaped myself for like that one part of it. Yeah. And I drove all around Portland trying to find a spot. So it was like in the moment of doing that, I'd rather do that than to sit here and try to sell to people by yeah. emailing them and saying like, would you want this? I would rather just have my shit be that quality that I'm making uh -huh. and have people be like, you know, I, I just, I have to buy this, uh -huh. you know? And like, I, I don't, there's like a point where with all this tricks and, and all this crap that's online of the, get this free download, go in this sales funnel. It's like, we, we all see it. And I think we all see it because we're all the people who are doing it and we're surrounded by it, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like, if we were weightlifters, we would be talking about weightlifting all the time and being like, look at all these supplements that are being thrown in our face all the time. But since we're not, we're like, hey, check out these supplements. Yeah. They, they tell me it's gonna be really cool, you know? So yeah. like, there's an art to that whole side of it, which I enjoy if it works, but I'm not good at that stuff. And it doesn't return anything in my favor ever, you know? So yeah, like, you know, I'd rather just create shit and then have people be like, damn, that's, that's badass. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm again, this question I've been for like the last three days is just chewing over is like, why was I more passionate about, selling crap I don't I mean I care about because it's my stuff I mean like oh I don't have that couch to sit on anymore but I I mean like I don't I didn't make the couch my brother doesn't have own the couch business it's just stuff versus then I have no emotional attachment to as far as the quality of the product versus like if I'm doing my copywriting I'm trying to pitch or like coaching service um yeah that, and it's not like oh because I don't believe in my stuff because obviously like I have confidence to step out and do it and I know I've done this stuff and I've helped people um, and I feel like it, it's it's similar to with like the content creation so I, I think that with the yard sale answer, answer my I think when I, I have the answer to my question is I didn't have my identity in it like I do with like my info course I have and my coaching service I have it's it's a couch if you don't like it or if you message me and right. tell me it's ugly, it's not worth the price I have it for, I should give it to you for less, I can say, you know what? I am so sorry you feel that way. You know, obviously this is not the right couch for you. Or I could be a jerk or whatever, whatever way. I was having a lot of fun with just really doing a good job with this stuff. Yeah. But it didn't offend me. If someone said that's too much and they count, I'd either say, sure, I want to move it. Or I'd say, no, I'm going to go ahead and pass and I'll talk to someone else. Yeah. Same thing with the, the, I think with my content, like I like um, with the video we're going to put out today, the business hero episode two that I I'm, would have done if I wasn't moving. And I've got a couple, like I'm going to release later today, the birth of an entrepreneur that I showed you. Um, and some of the other ones, like the Periscope video I was working on. So with these videos, I kind of feel the same way because if someone watches it, I don't feel like my identity is inside of it. I feel like it's a part of me. Like, you know, Hey, this, I put this, I made this, I can tell you all of them. I'm not perfect, man. All of them have,
applause. Even the video we have out today, like I can tell you, if, like, I know you made a comment about the audio, the music being a little too high for you. It didn't bother me. I thought it was fine. Yeah. Um, and then like there is something that um, I'm really glad you didn't point out. There's two things in it I don't like. But at the same time, I knew it was like good enough. So rather than, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's like the whole like, oh, it's good enough. Hit publish. Yeah. Um, but that like if someone told me, like if someone sees that and emails me, I'm not going to be like, oh, man, like I'm a fake or, oh, should I be doing this? I feel like yeah. you know, man, it wasn't for you. I think it's really good. Other people think it's really good. If you don't like it and you hate me. Cool. That just means I'm on the right track. That just means you don't like what I'm doing. And that actually feeds me just as much, just like Gary says, that actually feeds me just as much as the other. So please give me yeah. a thumbs down. Go ahead and give me some hate. That just tells me I'm on the right track that you hate the content I'm doing. I think that's why I didn't push to have anything like change because or to update because with the whole outlet of the, the round table, it's very loosely based and that's how we created it. Yeah. And We're going to be tightening it up though. Now that I'm like getting fired up again, it's starting to bother me. It didn't bother me before because I was like, eh. Whatever, let's just make it happen. And now I'm like, but that's the natural progression. Yeah, As things yeah. start to work, it starts to get more. It starts to tighten up. Yeah, you know, and, like, yeah. like the, like again, the guys, cyanide and happiness. These guys started off, and they're like, we're just gonna just make comics, and we're just gonna just kill it. And then they started to blow up, and they're like, oh, we have to make a book. When you make a book, you can't just go, ah, eh, just throw some stuff in it. Like, <laughs> you have to get organized, and then you have to sell it. And then you see these guys, they'll start showing their faces more in video, or they'll Instagram themselves, or they'll they'll talk in the video, and they'll like personalize themselves because people want to meet the person drawing this, you know? Mm -hmm. So they're starting to do things that are more professional, even though they'll keep that non-professional side to it, which I think I'd always want to keep with this. Um, but there is that, you have to kind of um, tighten things up as it starts to work. Yeah. You know, like you well, have to you tighten also the ship to up. That responsibility because I mean, we, we went through the whole, what I'll just maybe coin, or maybe it's been said, the, the whole entrepreneur loop to where, you know, like you go through that process of fake business, or even if you're doing a real business, doing stuff that doesn't matter. Um, like, you know, like Noah says all the time, like, don't go get business cards, don't get a website, don't start a blog if you haven't sold anything. Yeah. So when we did this, like I, I believed in it and the old me would have been like, okay, we're going to la launch it in a while, but first we got to get enough episodes. First we have to do this. We need a website. We still have a freaking website and we could have really used it a few times. Yeah. And I remember when we did this, I was very chill. I was just like, you know what? I'll do the Google Hangout next Tuesday. We'll see how it goes. And if it gets to the point where it works, then, then I'll get around to doing you know a podcast. Well, yeah. now that we're on episode 18, I now feel a weight. Like I feel responsibility now. Like yeah. you know, I think of like Sarah and uh, other other Aussies who get up. Like I saw my wife is like, they're getting up at six a.m. to watch our shows. Like, and I know we've talked about pushing it back a little to make it a little easier for them. But I was like, there's responsibility. I start to feel that. Like I know yeah. there's people in Australia who get up at six a.m. to watch our show and then participate and jump in if we need help. You know, yeah. like Nick shared our link today. Like. I know Nick is this great sales guy who's like killing it in the ag industry and has done some great stuff. Like I, I start to feel that. So then I go, okay, so now that we granted that we're not, you know, I'm not saying we're like multimillionaire, we're monetizing this thing, but like I start to feel that way. And it's like, okay, so not because I want to go out and be able to monetize better, but because I feel a responsibility to the, the, the round table is like, I need to get my act together and I need to put in the work and go get this on iTunes. And yeah. I need to go out and like, my YouTube channel or our YouTube channel in the sense of this is sloppy. Like I need to go, I know what to do. I just didn't do it because why put the effort in if no one's going to watch it. But it's like, now I start to feel that weight to go back and tighten that up. Yeah. And I think at the same time though, it's people like to put effort in if they're getting paid for it. So there's, there yeah. is, there is a, a balance of that where you can put so much stuff into something and make it look great. But if you're, it's not paying, there's no, push to do it mm -hmm. i guess you know but with us i mean like doing this i mean we're you know we're, we're both carving out an hour of our time every week to do this and showing we spend up a lot more than time. an hour for this show though <laughs> but we show up know, yeah yeah i mean but we, we show up and we do it this is like a uh, a college course to where the show's an hour but you know like you get in a college course and your teachers are like okay so this is a four credit course or a three credit course and so for every credit um, or every unit or whatever, you should be putting in two hours of work. I'm like, okay, so it's three units for each unit. I should, are you kidding me? I was like, 
I'm not going to put in that much study time for all my courses together, yeah. much less your dumb little like English <laughs> course. It's like you have got to be out of your mind. Well, that's what we do with this. It's like, oh, we have an hour show that we do, but the two of us on our own spend so much time I and mean, we're messaging each other 16 times a day, almost every yeah. day. You know, we're putting a lot of effort into it, which and you, you said the word this. Um, let's. Let's transition now because we're at um, an, a 149. Let's transition to what this is and the video and this kind of stuff um, because we have been talking about this and it makes a perfect transition. We are taking this to the next level. I mean, you noticed that the banner changed today. Um, you've heard us, like Mike's asking questions, uh, like was talking to Morgan and, and posting questions in the group about how he can make it a little more professional of how we get the group or how do we get these scheduled and, and sent to you guys. Um, I've been like alluding to a bunch of content I've been creating over the last, you know, few um, few weeks, and how it's going to be coming out soon. Um, and we're taking this to the next level. We've told you the story of how it started off casual and how it's grown, and we're taking it to the next level. And that's kind of what we're, we'll spend the next ten minutes or so of our of our call talking about, and then also talking about how you can actually help us. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. By the way, I just want to mention, Mike, just so you know, my water is paleo. It's pretty busy. just because it's water. Because I said, like, I'm always asking you, is that, you're like, oh, I'm eating a cookie. Is it paleo? Like, <laughs> yes, actually. I was like, dang it. Um, but yeah. Paleo, almond water. And almond I refilled almond. it already with my filtered water, but this water I didn't realize until I got home. I was worried it was going to taste horrible. It just tastes normal. It's like made, I don't know how, but it's something to do with Australian flowers. Like, they like brew, like mix it with, all, I don't know. It's like this whole thing about like, the Australians just know how to do it, and blah blah blah. The flowers from Australia, we make water. With. I never buy water. I go to my faucet and I fill this thing up. I've yeah. had this thing for like six years or no, seven. I don't, years. but I don't buy water. I buy containers, and so uh -oh. like, I I bought this because it's big, and I also it makes the math easy because it's one liter. So I was oh, like, okay. oh okay. So if I drink, you know, like I can I keep track of how much I drink, and I had to go buy this because I've been I know because of everything going on in life is I've gotten out of my drinking a gallon of water every day. So I was like, oh, I gotta go buy this and then get back into it. Yeah, I've been doing yeah. that too. So. All right, so now that we've talked about water. <laughs> <laughs> now that we set this up properly. <laughs> we had it set up, we derailed, that's my fault, I'm sorry. It's we guys. bullshit. <laughs> All right, how do we wanna do this? Do we wanna, um, I guess- I'm, I'm, gonna, gonna, I'm gonna let you lead the reins, or lead, lead the way, man. Okay, um, we talked about, okay, we're talking about art, we're talking about the round table, helping you guys out and content. And we really decided we want this to be more of, um, not that it matters, like it's more of a mental how we think of ourselves, but it kind of steers the boat of the round table. And we're like, you know, rather than thinking of ourselves as professional marketers and we're gonna like take the round table and have it just be like all the other groups that say they're different, but then really just are a funnel to sign up for some program, we want to be content creators. If we had to choose, like are we marketers, are we content creators? I know we're both, you know, if you're in business, you're both. But um, we want to identify as content creators, and that's why we're shifting our, our focus to really be on producing content for you guys rather than producing sales funnels. Because yeah. uh, if you notice in the beginning, go back in the group and look at all of our stuff. It's a lot of it's like me and Mike, um, per, like creating different sales funnels, seeing what'll stick. And so, like every two weeks, we had like a new sales funnel of something we were trying. We bought lead pages. Never give. I know. I did like, like 300 bucks on that shit. I didn't even use uh, it like once. Oh, we used it. We just didn't make money. We were like coming no, up with all these yeah. things. We we're trying to see what sticks. We decided <laughs> instead, like, let's shift over to the, the and let's just be content creators and let's produce the best content. And so the model, because we do have to monetize this. Um, and we decided the so that we can do more of it. And so we're not missing episodes. We can do this. And we want to go to twice a week. We want to have an evening one. Just so we have a one that we do now around one or we may even move it to two and then an evening one so no matter where you are in the world it makes it a little easier to watch them live all kinds of stuff all kinds of content mike's got animation how to animations and motivational animations i've got a bunch of similar videos and so like how are we going to monetize this because we don't want to do the traditional like put them in a funnel use our content to put them in a funnel that tries to sell them something that we you know blah yeah. blah blah we just didn't want to do that we're tired of that so he said let's just go as more of the content creators and so let's figure out how to monetize that and rather than going the traditional route of like ads or sponsors or whatever for the show we decided you know what let's put like the, the power of supporting us into the hands of our of our fans or um yeah i guess fans is appropriate hopefully <laughs> 
Uh, unless we're like Howard Stern and, and most of our people just watch us because they hate us and they want to see what we're going to say because <laughs> they hate us. Got to be on one side of the line, man. Yeah. So with that, we chose the, a platform called Patreon. And Patreon essentially, which you'll see as soon as we post the link, is like a Kickstarter, except for rather than going, we need a lot of money for this one-time project, it's, it's an ongoing thing to where you're able to pick an amount. I feel like I'm going through the script again. Like, as little as a dollar a month. Yeah. Uh, and so what is Patreon, you ask? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and the best part is, no, so, part uh, is. basically you pick an amount you want to support. There's two ways to do it. There's per episode, but because we're doing so much content, we're, we chose monthly. So you pick an amount. It could be a dollar. It could be $5. It could be $100 that you want to support every single month. And you're giving that on an ongoing basis. Obviously, you can cancel at any time. But you give that on an ongoing basis, and that lets us to be able to um, spend less time, you know, booking copywriting gigs and marketing gigs and side projects. Or I meant animation gigs. I was thinking of you, Mike. And lets us spend more time. So instead of animating videos for other companies, Mike can be animating videos for the group. Instead of me doing copywriting or yard sales, well, yard sales something else, but like doing the videos and stuff I'm doing for other companies, I can do content creation and videos for the group. And so, yeah, in a nutshell, that's what we're doing. And I guess we should post the link down here. People can check out our page, right? Yeah, dude. All right. So if, if you want, if you're just listening, it's really simple because it's Patreon, which is p a t r e o n dot com forward slash Entrepreneurs Roundtable. So it's pretty simple to like remember if you're driving or something, if you're watching this later um, and, and want to check it out. But that's the easiest way to support us. Obviously, join the group. Uh, go to Facebook and search Entrepreneurs Roundtable or look into, if you're on YouTube or, or whatever, look at the show notes and the description and, and join the group. And that's free. But then if you want to take that to the next level because you, you feel like we've provided so much value and you want to help this go, keep going and grow, you go to our Patreon page. You sign up to support us, like I said, even a buck a month, like anyone can afford a dollar a month, and that helps out a lot. Um, yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Yep. What do you want, do you want to say about it, See Mike? you later. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, I mean, like, we just, we really enjoy making content, and it's it could either be videos or just posting, I don't know, just like whatever it is we're making, we post in the group, and um, I would rather just do a lot more of that. Like, I've done videos on how to utilize LinkedIn, uh, like Jared said, I want to like for Drive 80, I'm creating an, uh, videos on like how to animate. <clears throat> but people keep uh, you know posting group like, how do I do this? H how can I animate or how can I, how can I animate myself? I'm a um, I'm a startup. It's like well, if well, I could create if someone it's like if someone posts that question on like a Monday, I could throw something together and make a video and post it up in the group, so I could spend more time doing that and say here's how you can do this and here's mm -hmm. a tutorial how to do this. You know, so it's. It's a lot of like live action stuff or live action. It's like a lot of live in the moment stuff. So all of our ideas, we don't know exactly what we're going to create, but the ideas are going to come from the feedback from the group. So when people say something, I'll like message Jared or he'll message me. We'll be like, dude, we should do this. And then we can be like, all right, cool. But then we're like, mm -hmm. fuck, like I got to work on this other project. And I'm like, shit, I got to work on this one too. So we can't create those things. So with, yeah. with this, it's going to free up our time and make it so we can – answer in a creative way and give a lot more value with the things that we can provide. And it's also, you know, one of the things in there, like it's tiered. So if you're paying X amount of dollars a month or whatever, when we start doing the webinars where we want, we're going to start teaming up with the people that we interview. So we're going to do yeah. a broad spectrum of what they're talking about. Like uh, with Daniel, uh, Daniel thousand last names, hut <laughs> um, from inbound Ascension. He, we talked about retargeting and um, you know, now it's a little hard because he's like going full force and just create uh, building his business. But um, we want to get him for about two hours to just focus like a laser focus on a piece of the pie that he's talking about and how walking the, through it step by step. Exactly. Like Instead of saying like, here's the broad scheme of things. It's like, here's exactly what you need to do. And so mm -hmm. we want to do things like that. And then Dave Shanebeck, who we brought on, who's a business coach, and he was the ex COO of Babies R Us and helped grow that company to be three billion dollars. We threw it out to him. We're like, "Hey, dude, we'd love to have you on and talk about how to structure your week, or what is it? How do you mess with your margins so you can actually, like, you know, mm -hmm. not your stuff you know, that amount. people are not normally the best at, and have him come on and do a training course to to teach. Yeah. So it's like and with all of our experts to do that. So they, like you said, they talk about a broad range. Yeah. 
when we come back and do a paid training, which is very specific. But then what Mike is saying is for the Patreon supporters, we have um, like bonuses or, or perks, I guess they normally call them for or rewards is what Patreon calls them, like Kickstarter calls them perks for people. So there's a certain level you hit and you get all that for free basically mm -hmm. because we're like, thank you yeah. so much for supporting us. So then you get like discounts and things like that. And you know, there's other groups out there that do that. And we're in the beginning when you're already part of something, there's usually that like, well, I'm already getting this. Why would I pay for it? And I'm sure that a lot of people are going to think that, but as this goes on, the more content we're going to create, the value is going to really start to grow. And that's where people yeah. are going to start seeing like, Oh shit, I wish I would have been a part of this from the, this point on because I could have been yeah. a part of this thing that they're doing right now, but now I can't even get into that. So it's just, you know, we're putting it out there and it's just, you know, for a little bit here and there, we're going to start advertising the group and making it bigger. And, you know, again, this whole thing has been organic since day one, but, um, yeah. you know, we have to just take the next steps to keep it going and growing in a very productive way to help people who join the group because give them, information on how they can live their own life really like that's like the main mm -hmm. goal is people come to that group because they're either leading their own life or they want to start and they need tools how to do that and i'm sick of the whole theory bullshit like i want to be like here's action this is exactly what you do yeah for for example um i i saw a piece of like theory advice on friday and i was like okay i'll try it these are experts it must work um i lost over 100 people <laughs> off my list because I just took someone's made up theory advice, right? Oh, wow. And I knew that it could go wrong. It was an experiment. Now, like, I'm just itching to like write this out as a blog post and, and share my results, the screenshots of what I did and, and how I lost. And I have even an idea for a follow up thing of how I could get a lot of them back with no hard feelings. I just don't have the time to do it because, you know, the Entrepreneur Roundtable, we're already putting a lot of time and it's one thing we're doing. But then I was thinking about that. I was like, man, if this is when we get to that level, like stuff like this, like we could totally do where we can be like, okay, I'm going to try this out. Yeah. And then if it fails, they're going to see not to do it. Or if it goes well, they're going to get like a Brian Harris style walkthrough of how to do it. Um, and they're getting, you know, Mike answering the questions, but I just want to make something really clear and then we'll jump off here. We don't want to spend forever just like pitching this thing. Yeah. Um, I feel like we've been doing like 18 or we're on 20 weeks of, of uh, doing jab, jab, jab. And this is the first time we're trying to kind of do a, a right hook. We've done like 24 hours total of <laughs> jab. Now here's just here's yeah. the 15 minutes of the hook. Yeah. Um, and so really quick, I do want to say this is not so like, it, um, like let's say this is the line of where the, the round table is. This isn't like, so we can just keep doing this and then like not have to do other stuff. The idea is, is so we can take the line from here so like up, 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 and hit like a new threshold yeah. of stuff. And eventually we'll have to do something else to get it to that next level and that next level. But that's the idea is we want to raise the bar from here to up here. And that's what this is. This isn't to make Mike and Jared like rich while we're going to just continue the same thing. We're, we're, our goal is to go and jump it up the level of quality. Where are you going? Well, I want to get rich. I'm just doing this well, for the money. And this, this, no, this, my this, point this is, is a scheme, bitch. <laughs> this is a pyramid scheme. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing about, I'll just say this real quick, my favorite thing about pyramid schemes is that everyone in them, the first thing they say is, it's not a pyramid scheme. That's, That's how you know it's a pyramid oh, scheme. Yeah. <laughs> this is a pyramid scheme. <laughs> this is not a pyramid scheme. Is, look at the structure. There's no way. You can't even. Like, you just said if you say it's not, then it is. You're just totally fucking us I over. No, I know. Okay. All right. Um, I think we've already kind of said everything. You want Anything else we need to say before we log off and let these fine people get back to their lives? I love everyone who watches this. You know, I am really sad that Sarah wasn't on today. Yeah, she well, she's probably still asleep. I would. Yeah. I, I think I still need to update the ten thousand dollar prize part, but I won't say what it was. First, <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? I have to ask this really quick. What would you do if someone actually bought that and wanted you to fulfill that obligation? Um, do it. I don't know. I, my 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 uh, definition of reality just doesn't exist anymore ever since I got divorced. So <laughs> you're like, uh, I have to see a picture first. <laughs> okay, here I'll tell you what. Another little thing: if, if you sign up at any level for uh, Patreon support, we'll we'll say what we're talking about. I don't want to say it just on open air, but if you become a Patreon supporter at any level, we will definitely we'll do a little special thing about. What the heck we're talking about or what Mike would have to do if someone signed up for ten thousand dollars. That'd be the way we make money. We just like talk about like all the fucked up things that go through my head and be like, now if you'd like to hear what it is, please donate 
this much yeah. money. We can almost do that. We could have well, because that's one of the things we're is for um, paid members. We're going to have the the after show, uh, where we're going to keep this going for like a half hour after, and just be kind of crazy with it. And when we put it up on the podcast on YouTube, that part won't be included. But you, if you're a member, then at any at any of the levels or whatever it kicks in, yeah. then you get like a link to like the the after show and the crazy stuff that we may or may not say. And that'll be really great too. Like think if we add a second show. A night show, and then the after show of the evening show um, could be interesting. <laughs> yeah, you never know who'll jump in. Because I mean, we're not, we're not letting anyone in unless they're like scheduled to be in the open seat here. But afterwards, we're gonna be like open yeah. seat. Whoever wants to come in. That's right. I forgot. Yeah, the after show, we're gonna bring in other people, and so the conversation could go anywhere. So yeah. they can ask us questions. Talk if the guest wants to stick around for it. He, you know, like I could see like bringing Noah Kagan on. And like he, him being like, I'll stick for the after show, and people just asking him really weird questions, and Noah being Noah, just yeah. answering these really weird questions. Yeah, and talking about his, his his places he gets motivation. We talk about like masturbating. <laughs> yeah, he said that on an interview once uh, on uh, uh, really? what, what, Andrew Warner's Mixer G, and you could just like Andrew Warner's level like, of uncomfortableness <laughs> was like palpable, like you could feel it, and I was like, freaking Noah. That's brilliant. I would love, I would totally do something like that. But um, all right, man, we should wrap this up. All right, guys. We will see you next week. Thanks for supporting.